because it's uh, after 10 already, at least where I'm sitting. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending from where in the world you've joined us. And welcome to our very, very first webinar here, live from the uh, Prime XBT Trading Academy. Um, my name is Dirk and I'm the head of trading education here at PrimeXBT.com. And I am what probably you would consider a professional trader. So I've been trading for 20 plus years, actually started my career in 1998. So that makes it 24 years already, almost a decade already. Uh, have been working throughout my life for numerous uh, institutions out there, such as banks, family offices, uh, brokerage companies, as financial advisor, as trader, as risk manager, many of those years also uh, in Singapore. And since 2019, uh, I have decided, or in 2019, I decided that I don't want to be an employee anymore uh, because I always loved very much uh, trading as a profession. But what I didn't like is, uh, you know, all those corporate political games you sometimes have in companies. So I decided I want to run my own trading book, which I've been focusing mainly since 2019 on. In last year, I was approached by Prime XPT and they basically uh, told me, hey, Dirk, you have been a client of us for quite some time now already. You are very successful in what you're doing with your trading. And we are looking for somebody that uh, helps us build up a trading academy that takes our clients by the hands and you know shows them from a professional point of view all those little traps that can linger out there on your way to to uh, becoming a professional trader. And uh, I think this is something you do not see that often in this industry. So I was more than happy to, to join and you know, uh, and a couple of times a week share my thoughts on the market, on trading, uh, whether it be with YouTube or in, in, in the format of live webinars as such as this. And uh, we are also live now on our homepage. So if you go to primexpt.com under products here, you will find the Trading Academy. On the right here, you always see the webinar that's coming up next. So throughout the day, you will see the webinar there for next week, probably today. Uh, we have a section called That Crypto Show, uh, where I once or twice a week uh, share my, my thoughts on what is going on on the cryptocurrency markets. You can also find everything, of course, on YouTube. You'll find platform guides here that show you how to operate the, uh, the Prime XPT uh, platform, basically. And we have trading and crypto courses that, you know, go more into general things like, for example, what is technical analysis uh, and, and, and more specific things. For example, here's one, how to find the perfect stop loss. So go and check it out. You can find everything, of course, also here on uh, YouTube. And uh, I'm, of course, very happy if after this webinar you want to check that out and maybe become a subscriber. That's, of course, free. So uh, nothing to lose there. Uh, also, before we start, of course, if we are going to to talk about trading, about day trading today. So I'm really I'm somebody that is very hands on. I'm not going to uh, talk very much like, oh, you should have, could have and so on and so forth. And, and, and uh, I, I want to show you really a strategy that I am trading almost daily. And I'll show you what trades this strategy did yesterday. We'll use Bitcoin here as an example, but you, you can use this strategy basically on every market out there. Nonetheless, guys, this is not a fire and forget strategy. Yeah? So this is very important. Never follow somebody just blindly. Yeah, I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for a very long time and all of what I'm showing you is working. But uh, just because it's working for me doesn't necessarily mean it's working for you. Trading is a very, very individual thing. Uh, I'll give you an example for that. I used to have a colleague who was a very, very good uh, day trader when it came to all futures. So he would trade WTI all futures uh, all day, was very good at that, brilliant, I would call him. But whenever he tried to apply his trading strategy to other markets, he would utterly fail. fail. And for me, it's the other way around. I'm pretty good in a lot of markets, especially cryptocurrencies and, and Forex. But when it comes to trading oil, I tend to always lose money. So 
this is what I mean, you know, a trading strategy is always something very, very personal. So I hope that I can inspire you a little bit to maybe take what I'm going to teach you about today uh, to start building your own trading strategy that is really uh, suited to your personal mindset. So that is very, very important. Uh, never just blindly copy trade somebody. Always uh, use your own brain, do your due diligence, and uh, there is no trading strategy out there that is like the holy grail of trading with an indicator that is correct all the time and that guarantees you to become a millionaire within two weeks. If you read about something like this out there, it's 100% BS. So please don't fall that for that. Okay, so we're going to start here before looking at the strategy itself by, by having some thoughts. So when I come onto my uh, sit down at my trading desk in the morning i usually go through the news first because i want to get an impression on how probably the market uh, that i want to or the markets that i want to trade today are going to behave in terms of volatility so for those of you guys who don't know what volatility is this basically means uh, how high the swings to the upside and downsides are going to be and as traders, especially for day trading, we are always looking for a bit of volatility. So we want we want uh, we want the market to swing up and down a little bit because we need uh, some movements in order, of course, to profit from that. Nobody likes a market that just goes uh, sideways. You're not going to make money usually from that, except maybe you are selling options, but that's a whole uh, different story. And so I want to make up your, my mind in the morning. Is this going to be a low volatility day today in that asset? Is that going to be like normal volatility or are we go, am I going to expect high volatility? Because this is going to have an impact on the decisions uh, I allow my trading system later on to, to make. Uh, it's going to make different, more conservative uh, decisions in a high volatility setting is going to be a little bit more aggressive when I expect a mid to low volatility. So I'm going to show you later on the trades with a system in Bitcoin I did yesterday. Uh, for now is, so yesterday I sat down and I kind of expected, let me zoom in here a little bit for you that it's probably going to be somewhat a midday volatility because uh, the news out there yesterday were like not so specific. Yeah, there was like talk going on uh, here on, on Bloomberg on that regulators across the globe are kind of getting more serious about regulation, but nothing that is my opinion was not already in the market. Also, we were approaching this middle band here of the Bollinger Bands and usually the market is not going to go through that with a lot of momentum. So I kind of expected for yesterday, maybe we're going to attack this middle band and then probably we are going to close about where we started, which was correct. Yeah, as you can see here, wick up here, wick down here, we have the opening and close pretty much uh, together. So this is uh, what I like to call a mid volatility day. Uh, if I'm expecting a high volatility day and this is always difficult to expect of course because usually price things like this candle here for example are coming i wouldn't say out of nowhere but uh, it's it's harder to to forecast them than a low or mid volatility day uh, if you see something like this and you are a day trader and you really see the markets go crazy uh, like this day where bitcoin really dropped by 12 percent by the way, this is too much volatility usually. There is, at least from my experience, no trading system out there that can handle this type of volatility. So this is a typical day where you might want to decide, oh my God, things are going crazy. The mechanisms of the market that usually work are not working anymore. So I want to stay at the sidelines today uh, and I, I'm just going to watch the market and not participate in that. This is uh, totally legitimate and uh, absolutely something you you should do because our main goal especially in the beginning if you're a beginner trader is always to first come to a point where we mid to long term do not lose money anymore when you have reached that point then you can start thinking about okay now i want to go the next step i want to start earning money with that so uh, we made a volatility decision for yesterday we thought okay it's going to be a mid volatility or low volatility day probably 
And uh, this is going to mean we can maybe be a little bit more aggressive with uh, our trading system, uh, with the entries and exits of our trading system. And this trading system is actually taking into account one, two, three, four, five different things. So it consists of, uh, of uh, a chart. In this case, it's Bitcoin here, the left chart. Uh, the right chart, by the way, is the S&P 500. More on that later, why I have two charts here for trading Bitcoin. And uh, so I have Bollinger Bands, simple, standard, plain vanilla Bollinger Bands placed here on uh, on my Bitcoin charts. It's a five minute Bitcoin chart, by the way, but uh, you can do trade the same also on, on 50 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, and so on and so forth. One minute maybe might be a little bit difficult uh, because probably the trading fees at one point are going to be too high in relationship to your earning expectations. You'll see what I mean by that later on when I show you the statistics about yesterday. Uh, excuse me, I always need some coffee in my mouth. So, and we want, so we have a Bollinger Bands up here, down here we have an RSI and I like to always call this my special RSI. So it's a relative strength index, a vanilla one. And then I put two uh, moving averages over it. Uh, first of all, a weighted moving average. And the second uh, is a, a exponential moving average. And now the, the definition, like the, the textbook definition of, of uh, an RSI trading strategy would be you want to sell if the RSI goes over 70 and you want to buy if the RSI goes under 30. But this strategy does not work. So there's a lot of research that has been um, going on about the RSI and this textbook strategy does not work. So we need to modify it. It's still a good indicator in my opinion because it shows you is, uh, are the prices of the market of your asset of Bitcoin in this example at the moment, uh, prices that are out of what you can expect from a standard deviation. So from a Gaussian uh, bell curve, so to say, or are they, they in line? But you can, if you trade it like, like textbook, so for example, you would have entered the market here at this candle already at, so that was, uh, you would have sold here at 38,600, but look what, uh, what happened after this, the market still went up by, by more than uh, 600 US dollars, but the market went against you first. And this is going to do stuff to your mind, of course. So there must be better ways of entering the market. And in my opinion, a better way of entering the market is to first of all, wait for those zones of extremes and then wait until with, uh, in this case, a sharp decline, the RSI falls below its moving averages. And if you do that, so you can see that, let me zoom in a little bit for you here. So it's better to see, to see. So that would have happened here at this point, at this candle. So you would have sold at the, or I, I sold, not would have, uh, in this case, at the opening of the next candle here at 38,950 roundabout or 40. Uh, and you can see much, much better entry uh, than what you would have had with a classic definition of the RSI, right? And so so this is what we, the, the first rule of thumb here for this trading system. We want to wait for sharp corrections of the RSI under those two moving averages. And we want to, those corrections to be in extreme zones. So we don't. What we don't want to see is uh, we don't care so much about what is going on here between 40 uh, and and uh, and 60. So whenever you see a cross there, I'm pretty much going to ignore that. Uh, if we are in, if I expect a day with a, let's say medium volatility. I might uh, also trade uh, crossings, which I see here on the downside between 30 and 40. That's why I have those two green lines here and uh, sell the market if I see sharp crosses uh, between 60 and 70. Now, the cross itself is not the only thing I'm looking for here. I also want to see that the market has reached uh, for a buy position 
uh, this lower band of my Bollinger Bands and I want to see the, for sell position that the market has reached the upper Bollinger Band or penetrated it in this case already because I want the market to be as extreme overbought or oversold as possible. And uh, we can go through a trade here, for example, my first trade on this yesterday. Uh, so I, I saw the market coming down. We were already trading at the lower Bollinger Bands here. I saw the RSI coming back from under 30 and going over, uh, over its moving averages. So I entered the market So the uh, here on the next candle. I open round about at 38,300. And what I'm doing then is two things. I'm going to wait, obviously. I'm going to set my stop loss at the last low. So that would have been here, or that was here in this case. And then I'm going to wait and see if the market really does an upswing. Once the market has reached this middle line of the Bollinger Bands, I tend to, I tend to uh, move my stop loss to break even because the, the market has gone into my direction already. Uh, I don't know if it's going to reach the upper band at this point uh, is still, so I want to move my stop loss to break even to make sure I'm not losing money on this trade anymore. Uh, in this case, the, the market continue upwards and my take profit is going to be here at the upper band, in this case, uh, around about at 38,453. Pitcher, perfect trade. Uh, in this case, worked out very well. What you will see very often also, and you'll see that later on, is that once the market has reached the middle Bollinger Bands here, it's going to reverse and maybe hit your stop loss. This is part of the, the game. So don't be sad, you know, if the market comes back then, hits your stop loss, uh, which at this point probably is going to, you're going able to go uh, get out of the market without winning or losing anything. Uh, it's just normal. And if the market then continues up, oh well, sell uh, this is what happens, uh, but you just move on to the next trade then. So um, second trade in this case was uh, an extreme trade. So I saw we saw this huge spike up here. I, I mean, this is a five minute chart. So of course, uh, movements of larger than a person always look uh, very huge on, on five minute charts. But we saw the, the RSI, the market and the RSI spiking up. I waited until we saw the cross again. It was a nice cross over 70. So this is really an extreme sign. Sold the market up here at around about 38,950. Market went down when it reached the middle band. I moved my stop loss to break even. In this case, the market moved even further down. I got a little bit nervous <laughs> because uh, I saw the market approaching here and then retracting again. So I closed the trade round about here already. Should have waited a little bit longer. I would have had the chance here to get out even lower. Nonetheless, this was a great trade. And uh, this was a great trade picture, perfect trade for this trading system, in my opinion, that happened there. And if you have one of those trades a day, you're already going to make a bank. I can promise you that. Now, as we move forward in the, in the day, so this was yesterday at around 10 a.m., as we move forward through the day, I'm going to start shifting my focus to also look at the S&P 500. And let me see, I think we need to move that a little bit forward. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to also start focusing on the S&P 500 for my Bitcoin trades. Now, why am I doing this? Excuse me, quickly. Because there's a large correlation between the stock market and especially the S&P 500, which is uh, the most important uh, index, uh, stock index in the world, contains the 500 largest publicly traded uh, US companies by market capitalization. And uh, if, we, if the S&P 500, or you can also do the same with the NASDAQ, by the way, uh, goes up or down by a large margin, you will usually also see cryptocurrencies doing the same moves. And this is something normally we we crypto heads and, and, and as you can see, I'm uh, really a Bitcoin enthusiast uh, in the long run um, is something we don't like to hear. We don't like to hear that, yeah, the stock markets are influencing uh, the cryptocurrency market, but it's true. And the closer the opening of the stock market comes, so the official opening of the S&P 500 uh, of the US stock market, the New York Stock Exchange is at uh, 3.30 p.m. my time. 
the more on a normal trading day that is, you will see that Bitcoin is going to move very much like the S&P 500. And so I I'm, I'm have to switch here in my consideration of taking positioning, uh, not only what is going on with the RSI and the Bollinger Bands here in Bitcoin, I also need to have an eye on uh, the S&P 500. So if I see, for example, a signal here that tells me, hey, I need to sell the market here, but the S&P 500 is maybe at its lower Bollinger Bands, I really have to strongly reconsider if I want to trade this trend, because if, it, if the stock market then suddenly starts running up, uh, the chances of Bitcoin copying that moves are, move are very, very high. This does not work every day like this. Uh, usually there is a correlation, and there is a correlation, by the way, because you have a lot of algorithmic traders, algobots, so to say, training this correlation out there. So it's a bit of a self-fulfilling uh, prophecy. And I'm going to show you an example also from yesterday for this now. Uh, again, here we had Bitcoin. So this was at, at uh, 130 roundabout, 135. Going up here again, the RSI going above 70. Uh, we were hitting the upper Bollinger Band here. We saw the cross, the sharp cross that is. So you don't want a slide because you really want a slump down uh, in this case here. Uh, again, for, for Bitcoin. So uh, at, at this point here, at 38,675 roundabout. And, uh, but if you look here to the right, and I hope you can see my cursor there as well, the S&P 500 was also at the upper Bollinger Band, but if you look at the RSI there for the S&P 500, it was still a little bit in no man's land. So there was not so much going on. Nonetheless, I decided uh, yesterday to take this trade and watch what happened then. So I shorted the market here, and at the same time, I saw the S&P going further up. Bitcoin was going a bit sideways, so you could see really here, okay, the market wants to, uh, wants to go sideways here. And, uh, but due to the rising stock market, there was also pressure to the upside. As you can see in this candle, it was like tick, tick. the market wanted to go up, but uh, it, it couldn't at that moment very good. And uh, I was in this case quite lucky. So uh, because we actually moved to this middle Bollinger Bands, I was able to put my stop loss uh, to my break even. In this case, uh, you can see market continued lower then, but then reversed to the upside very, very quickly again. And this is because the S&P uh, started, uh, started to go to the upside as well. And you can see, let me circle this here for you. So it's maybe more more clear what I mean. Like if you look at this phase here of the market, the S&P on the right, and the same phase for Bitcoin, you can see how much alike those movements are. This is really because the closer we get to the opening bell of the New York Stock Exchange. Now this S&P, uh, don't be confused, is traded uh, almost 24-7. Uh, but in the morning, in European morning, it's with an, in the Asian session with very low volumes. That's why in the beginning of the day, I'm always not looking too much on the S&P 500, uh, but the more we move towards the opening bell of the New York Stock Exchange, the more I'm going to also consider the what is the S&P 500 doing or what is the NASDAQ doing uh, in, in taking consideration with my Bitcoin positioning here. And you can see the moves very much like so Bitcoin was merely copying the S&P 500 in this case. And then at uh, 3.30 opening bell, things always go a little bit crazy on the stock markets. There's repositioning going on, same here in Bitcoin. So it's going to become a little bit jumpy. And uh, throughout the day then, until at least the closing of the New York Stock Exchange, you will on a normal day see the cryptocurrency markets pretty much copying what the uh, S&P 500 is doing. Uh, another thing you want to have a close eye on are economic events. So if we, for example, uh, let's see what we have today. Yeah, later on today, for example, we have the ADP national employment coming out. Uh, so this is pretty, pretty important. At 215, you might want to try to stay out of a market because uh, if this number for those important uh, event is like very, very different from what is forecasted. Uh, the markets might go crazy for a little while. And 
all the technical analysis we are doing, all trading systems usually cannot handle this. Uh, so you might want to wait a little bit at the sideline, maybe for half hour or 45 minutes until things have normalized a little bit again. And uh, this is especially true like first Friday uh, every and every month. So it's going to be this Friday again when the unemployment report from the USA comes out. All right, so quick summary again here for the strategy, and then I'm going to show you some results of yesterday. Is again we want to have we want to wait for for sell signals until the price of Bitcoin reaches the the high band of the Bollinger bands. We want to see the RSI falling below its moving averages. Uh, the higher, the better that happens. The better the signal is. If the market goes down, we're going to initially put the stop loss at the last high, uh, by the way. Uh, so always, please always use a stop loss. Markets can go crazy anytime and you don't want to uh, especially leave your trading desk without having a stop loss uh, in, in place. I can tell you stories where, for example, of a friend of mine who had a euro dollar position, then went in a, on a plane for an hour and when he got out, he had, lot, uh, he had lost uh, 50,000 US dollars uh, just because he didn't put a stop loss and then the market went crazy while he was up in the air flying. So you don't want to do that. Um, uh, you protect your capital under all circumstances. Once the market reaches the middle Bollinger Bands, we are going to uh, put our stop loss to break even, maybe a little bit more than break even because we're also, of course, paying trading fees. Once we reach this area, let me say, of a lower Bollinger Bands, we can close the trade. For long trades, it's the other way around. Uh, so we had an example here for exa uh, yesterday. And as you can see, I like to play this conservative. Uh, so here the market came, uh, the RSI came back from the low 30s, crossed its moving averages. Uh, market, I, I entered the trade, market went up, middle Bollinger Band hit, move my stop loss to break even. Uh, upper Bollinger Band hit and I take profit there. The later a day it gets, so the more we are getting into the area of the opening of the New York Stock Exchange, the more we need to take into consideration also what the stock market, the S&P 500 or NASDAQ is doing. So if you have a signal uh, here, even if it's in the extremes, but you see the stock market is doing something totally different, at the moment, you might want to decide to wait it out at the sidelines uh, because uh, on normal days, the crypto markets are going to copy uh, what the stock markets are doing there. We don't like that, as I said, as crypto heads, but nonetheless, it certainly is true. Okay, so uh, let me show you some results. So for this strategy yesterday, and this is, by the way, another important uh, part of, of being a trader if you want to do things in a more professional way. You need to have something like a trading diary. Uh, take down, take note of all the trades you did, uh, not only because you want to have an overview by the end of the day and by the end of the month what you were earning and how your risk reward ratio was and all those other nice little uh, financial metrics you can apply to your trading, uh, but you, you, you really want to keep track of what your net profit is, have you won money, have you lost money. Uh, if, if you see, hey, I lost money, you can go back and really into the charts and see, okay, what was going on there? Was there something maybe I didn't see that uh, that happened on the market? And for Bitcoin, as you can see, this strategy, I'm trading on a number of different uh, assets out there. And uh, with Bitcoin, I made here three trades yesterday. They were all in profit. This is, was quite a good uh, day for this strategy yesterday. It does not have to be like this every day. So it's totally normal also if we have like crazy volatility days like this to lose money with a strategy like this. This is part of the, the game. That's why it's so important to never risk all of your money or last, large portions of your money on one trade. So I risk usually something between one to five percent maximum if i'm like really really very very sure about a trade and you can see i had two uh, so this is by the way uh, the this diary takes down uh, what happened in the trade if uh, one bitcoin is uh, was traded uh, later on i'm going to show you i'm adjusting this with the leverage i i took on an individual trade so i'm not always 
just training a leverage of one to one or one to five, depending on how good the signal is, I might choose a, a higher or lower leverage. And you can see with uh, one Bitcoin, I made 734 US dollars from this trading strategy, paid a little bit of fees here. Luckily, Prime XBT is a trading platform with very, very low fees. And you can see how uh, how the fees really affect. So if I would have paid something like 0.15 or 0.2% uh, like a lot of the platforms out there take in fees, I probably would not be able to earn money with a strategy because the fees would eat it up all. And so this, I'm going to take this down for every asset I am trading. I'm going to do adjustments uh, for leverage and conversions because uh, I, I usually count my profits and losses in, in US dollars. So I need to convert them, of course, to US dollars. And then by the end of the day, I have a total. Uh, I have this extra sheet summarizing and adjusting the leverage for every asset I'm trading the strategy. And as you can see, Bitcoin, uh, because I took a little bit more leverage on the second trade where uh, the very good signal was like really the superstar yesterday, uh, earned me quite a lot of money. But you can also see here, for example, in Ethereum, and especially in Apple and, and the Nasdaq, where this didn't really work out well yesterday. And this is very, very normal. If you trade this kind of strategy or any strategy on a number of markets, you'll always have markets mm, that, day that, that don't work out so well. You have markets that work out very, very well. By the end of the day, I earned uh, 1,850 US dollars with this, and I paid 690 US dollars in trading fees. And I mean, imagine now, and this is with 0.05%. Uh, imagine this would have been 0 0.10 then I would have paid already double of the trading fees. That's why it's so important to, to have a platform where you trade something like this that has low fees. And luckily, Prime XPT is one of those platforms. So by the way, if you are not yet a client of Prime XPT, um, I'm going to leave you a link where you can sign up. I'm going to put this in the chat and hope you guys can see this. And the beauty of it is that if you sign up under this link, the guys out there will see that you are a student of the trading academy and uh, they are going to have some nice perk every now and then for you and if you want to start trading already you can also use a promo code so this is this one here called trading academy and you can enter this promo code if you go to your margin account and then here on the left account uh, the promo code is uh, trading academy all in capital letters and uh, then you can get up to seven thousand us dollars in bonus on your deposits so this is quite nice and gives you some some extra margin you can trade with and secure your trades okay so uh, enough advertisement on that i hope i kind of inspired you guys a little bit with uh, how you can uh, approach trading. So my goal really is that uh, after this webinar now, which is going to end in a couple of minutes, that you maybe sit down and not copy this one-to-one, -one, but understand that through, first of all, no trading strategy is always going to work. Second of all, you can take classic trading strategies like the RSI, modify them and uh, play a little bit around uh, with the averages, with the Bollinger Bands, with the settings for this until you find something that you are comfortable with and that you understand that markets influence each other. The financial market is the biggest puzzle, in my opinion, in the world. That's why I'm personally so fascinated by it because you have all those little turning wheels that end up influencing uh, if the, for example, S&P 500 or Bitcoin is going up and or down. And it's our task as, as traders to find out what those turning wheels are. Actually, investment banks, hedge, fund, hedge funds spend hundreds of millions of US dollars every year to find out exactly that. Uh, so these are the guys, when it comes to day trading, sometimes that we are competing against. So we have to choose our trades very carefully and you can see i'm talking about day trading here but in the case of bitcoin i only did three trades yesterday because it's important to be patient it's important to wait until you really see a good signal uh, do not trade 
because of the click 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 action and the adrenaline it gives you when you uh, when you enter or exit a position trade when you see there is a good sign and a high probability setup and even if the setup fails then well and move on to the next trade don't take it personally never risk more than one to five percent of your account balance per trade because always remember for for every good trade uh, for every good day trading day out there there's going to be a bad day uh, on the horizon coming up and a bad day uh, where you make losses with a, with any trading strategy should not be a day that really blows your account or, or destroys 50 percent or even 100 per percent of your account balance don't do that because this is going to mess you up mentally all right thanks for your attention uh, i hope you like this uh, later on check out our website again so next week i'm definitely going to be back with another webinar and uh, if you have any questions any requests maybe specific assets that you would like to to me to talk about uh, or to analyze you can also write to us under academy at primexpt.com so this is this uh, this email will directly reach me uh, my promise is i'm going to answer every single mail coming there so don't be shy and request some things uh, other than that remember to go to our youtube page and leave us a like there, subscribe to our channel. I'm going to see you again next week. Take care, all the best, and remember, always use a stop loss. Goodbye.